Time to get inspired, develop, and improve your yoga knowledge in English. You're listening to Your Yoga in English, a podcast for non-native English-speaking yogis and yoga teachers that want to practice or teach yoga worldwide. My name is Annie, the founder of Enga Unite, and here to guide you on your way to become the confident, effective, and knowledgeable English-speaking yogi you want to be. All right. Very excited right. again to be here. Thank you so much for joining us, Manu. My pleasure, Annie. It's, uh, it's an honor to be here with you. Yes, absolutely. It's really, really nice. It's our second, no, it's our third time, our fourth time together. We've been speaking quite a bit on social media, on your end and on my end. <laughs> and today we are here for an expert interview. And we're going to speak about how to offer online yoga classes and gain more students. And Manu, you might know from Emprendedores de Yoga. He's a yoga business coach and he's got his own Facebook group and programs for yoga teachers that want to start uh, teaching online, have their own business and gain more students online in the yoga world as well. So thank you again for being here. Could you introduce yourself a little bit more? What do we know? What, do, what should we know about you? What should you know about me? <laughs> <laughs> well, I am from Spain. I am from Spain. I think uh, my name, Emprendedores del Yoga, say it, is, say it, say it all, you know, <laughs> I'm from Spain. Yeah. But I've been, I've been living in abroad for, since 2004. 2004 was the first year I traveled to Ireland, and ever since I've been living in different countries, Italy, Thailand, different parts of Spain. I am a yoga teacher. I started my yoga teacher journey in 2000. Also, it was in 2004, around that, I think it was around 2004, when I took my first yoga class, and I just loved it and I knew inside of me I knew that I wanted to to become a, a yoga teacher one day mm -hmm. and uh, fast forward 2007 that was when I decided to do my first teacher training I was living in Italy then started teacher training in Ashtanga yoga completely loved it I thought it was just so cool you know just I didn't know that there was a way to move in yoga that was so dynamic and uh, I didn't know that that was possible in yoga and I really loved it. And um, yeah, I was more and more into my goal, into my vision of becoming a, a yoga teacher. And so fast forward 2014, I actually took, finished my first teacher training because even though I started one in 2007, I never started that teacher training. It was a very long three years program. And uh, never finished that, but it was like kind of my entrance to, to the Ashtanga world, to my dedicated five days a week practice. You know, mm -hmm. this is the Ashtanga practice. This is like either you marry the practice yeah. or you're out. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, you know, I decided in 2014 that, uh, you know, it was my time to, even though I was teaching already, I didn't have a certification, but I was teaching already. I was teaching beginners. I was doing some collaborations with uh, yoga retreats. And, but I decided that it was my time to take my 200 hours, finish my 200 hours. I went to Thailand, loved it, loved the place, loved the energy, and knew that I wanted to be there, work there. So that took us for about, you know, from 2015 until more or less the end of 2018, when I decided, yes, uh, this is what I want to do. I know that I've been doing this for a while. I really love teaching yoga. Now it's time for me to start my own thing, you know, start my own business, start my own venture, call it as you like it, become an entrepreneur. I'm not sure if I use the word entrepreneur back then, but you know, that was uh, end of 2018, beginning of 2019, here I am, Bangkok. And I'm starting my yoga business as an independent entrepreneur, mm -hmm. realizing that I 
know how to help people. I understand uh, how to help people with yoga, how this practice can be very helpful, not only yoga, but I was also at that point, I also trained as a personal trainer. So yoga, fitness, uh, pranayama, asana, all the things. But here I am. I know how to help people, but I don't know how to create an online presence. I don't know mm -hmm. how to price my services. I struggle when it comes to marketing myself. And I realized that there are so many things that I never, never learned in, my, in any of the trainings that I took or even trainings that I participate as a teacher. Yeah. Because during this journey, I also was doing um, education for yoga teachers, continuing education. And I realized that this is something very rare, like not many teachers, at least like maybe in the whole uh, training that I had as a yoga teacher and fitness and, and personal trainer, there was like maybe two hours maximum yeah. of the business side of yoga. So what happened was I started to, I realized that I needed to learn that if I wanted to succeed as a yoga teacher, if I wanted to sell my retreats, if I wanted to sell my programs, I needed to, to understand how this works. I started to learn that and I realized that, you know, everything that I was learning, everything that I was applying to my own business was giving results. And mm -hmm. I realized that this is something that other yoga teachers like me who wanted to become independent entrepreneurs who wanted to become business owners needed to know and needed to understand. Mm -hmm. So that was kind of, it was around 2020. Yes, it was 2020 when we had the pandemic, the pandemic hit. I, back then I was already teaching online yoga and before 2020, online yoga was very rare. There was people doing that, but there was no many people doing that. So I, before 2020, I think it was like kind of something really difficult. But in 2020, you know, there was this explosion. We all know what happened in 2020. We have the <laughs> pandemic, we have COVID, and every yoga teacher needs to go online. If you want to mm -hmm. keep learn if you want to keep serving your people if you want to keep running your business you need to go online yeah. and I realized that that was my you know that was like kind of my opportunity to step into into this role of helping other yoga teachers how to not only how to teach online which is something that I've done in the past but also kind of what I'm doing more right now which is like how to create your online presence how to differentiate yourself from the rest of yoga teachers because nowadays we know there is so much online going on and how basically how to make money doing what you love, which is teaching yoga. And I think this is pretty good introduction. <laughs> You've answered all my questions. <laughs> okay. Can we call it a day already? This is it. <laughs> That's it. Nice no, no, you. no. <laughs> there are so many questions I still have. I always love learning from you and hearing from you. There's so much wisdom that you can share with us. So this is only the beginning. <laughs> I've got a question because basically you were a yoga. I'm just going to summarize a little bit because you practiced yoga for a long time. You did some training here and there, started teaching. Eventually, why did you make the decision to start teaching online? Because I think for some and for many people still, even though... COVID happened and they understand that teaching online obviously gives them more possibilities of filling up their classes. More and more teachers understand that in-person classes are not really going to bring you as much anymore, but still fear making that shift from going it, uh, from in-person to online classes. Why did you go to, why did you start teaching? I, uh, I think Annie, it was a combination of things. On the, in the first place, I think it was the fact of um, I was living in Bangkok and this was a city that I didn't really love and I don't really love Bangkok. And, uh, you know, even though I love Thailand and I love many things, I love many things about the Thai culture, but Bangkok is a place that I struggle. And even though I had like great connections and I had my private clients, I was doing collaborations with other yoga studio, running my retreats in the south of Thailand. But still, there was a part of me that feel like, you know, I, I like the idea of being able not to leave my home, you know, to work from home. 
I like the mm-hmm. idea of being home, teaching my yoga from home without having to, to get into the city. So that mm-hmm. was part of it. That was one part. And then the other part was back then I was studying with, with a yoga teacher who probably, uh, you know, his name is Jay Brown. He has this very famous podcast, Jay Brown Yoga Talk, uh, Yoga Podcast, something mm-hmm. like that. I was, was studying with him a couple of years ago. Um, I'm not studying anymore with him, but uh, back then I was, I was studying and he was teaching yoga online. I was taking his more than yoga classes. I was taking his group class for yoga teachers. We would talk mm-hmm. about, you know, things that concerns yoga teachers. And I realized that actually, you know, it is possible to create a, an online community. It is possible to work with people from different parts of the world. So that was, I think, what got, mm-hmm. got me like so interested. Yeah, absolutely. So then I think this is a very valid point. Teaching online can give you so many opportunities. It gives you so much freedom. But why do you think it is that so many people still fear making that shift? You know, I think there are a few points here. Yeah. (laughs) One of them is, I would say, it's the fact of wanting to be in your comfort zone or maybe it's like kind of fear of stepping out of your comfort zone yeah because you know uh, I mean I I love in person and I always think even though I encourage yoga teachers to teach online and I love teaching online I still think that you know there's nothing like in person like if you want to if you can be with your teacher in the same room practicing yoga that's an amazing experience that cannot be changed with an online experience cannot be compared, but you can still have a great amount of connection within the online teaching. And uh, I think for some teachers, another resistance that I find, so the first resistance would be they feel a little bit out of their comfort zone, you know, like, oh my gosh, I never done this online. It's not for me. Maybe they have fear of the technology. But I also find that maybe another resistance could be they may think that passing on the yoga online is not as authentic. Mm -hmm. I came across some teachers who they fear that, you know, putting the yoga online, they are not going to be able to give a deep enough experience to their students. Mm -hmm. And I think I think they're wrong. (laughs) I think you still can have a deep, meaningful experience. You can still create a connection. Mm -hmm. And be it an example, Annie, you and I have never met in person, but I would never say that you and I never met in person because we're friends now. Yeah. We've never never been in the same room, but, you know, I I think we are connected, even though we all that we have been doing it online, you know? Absolutely. I think you're right. I think a lot of people do feel out of their comfort zone and they might feel as if it's not as personal. But just like you, I did teach before COVID online. I was teaching English mostly, not necessarily yoga. Um, And making that shift of teaching yoga online for me felt really weird in the beginning too. But I completely agree with you that you can still really create deep connections online and still read the room through the webcam or whatever it is that you're using. It still can be very personal, even though you're not physically together. Yeah, and it's a different experience, you know, because yeah. um, even even like sometimes we kind of want to translate whatever was happening in the in-person, we want to translate that into the online but they are two completely different experiences. Yeah. And maybe the way you are doing connections in person, it's different to the way you are doing connections online. Maybe in person, you know, for people who love doing adjustments, that's the best way to connect with the other person. But, you know, online, you can have a breakthrough conversation and you can have amazing feelings and emotions practicing and, and you can have a amazing experience even though that person is online yeah absolutely so what do you need to know before you start teaching online what are some key elements we need to bear in mind or take into account before we start teaching online okay so this is again this is my own experience and it may be a limiting belief because you know (laughs) what I always study was I learned yoga by teaching in person. And so 
Personally, I do believe that before starting teaching online, it would be super helpful, if not even maybe necessary to have a little bit of in-person experience. Yeah. And that could be, you know, your family, your sister, your mom, whatever, you know, that could be having that little experience. But again, I know that throughout this year, since the pandemic, many yoga teachers have completed their teacher trainings completely online and maybe yeah. they're teaching and maybe they know how to do it. And, and that's fine. That's why I say maybe this is my own limiting belief, you know, mm -hmm. but um, personally, I recommend that a little bit of in-person could help you understand many things I would recommend. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so that's one of the things we need to know before starting online. Another thing, and we can go a little bit deeper into that later on, it's, you know, when you are teaching online, once you, you teach online, I think it's pretty easy. But if then, if then your goal is to find other students, because this is what we are working today about finding more people, yeah. something that you need to be very clear before starting, it's to know who are you talking to? Who is your ideal student? Who is your ideal client? And especially who are they and what are the problems they are facing? Yeah. Why this is important? This is important because it's in the online world, it's hard to keep a voice that it's going to reach. Okay, let me put it this way. If you are talking, we, we have, I don't want to say that something that everyone is saying, but it's, it's like that. Like if you want to talk to everybody, it's like your message is not going to reach the people you want to work with. So this is when it comes all of the niching down and all of the specialization we constantly talk in the yoga world. It's super important to know who is that person because if you know who is the person you are talking to and if you know how can you help that person, then your message is going to become more powerful and have more impact. Mm -hmm. so I think that is super, super helpful. And then, of course, you also need to know how to provide a solution for the problem. If you know the person you want to help is, let's put it this way, you want to help people who work in an office, they work long office hours, they have back problem. So you know that you're going to talk to those people through your marketing, through your marketing channels, your social media, whatever you share with your content. And then you know that one of the problems they face probably is back pain or neck pain. So you as a yoga teacher, I'm sure you know the solution for the back and the neck problem. And uh, every yoga teacher can play with it in a different way, depending on your background, depending on your experience. But basically, that's one of the main things to understand before we kind of put it out there or set out there as the teachers and start spreading our message. And then the, the other thing you need to know, it's quite simple, but of course, you need to know how to use Zoom and PayPal. That's it. <laughs> <laughs> Yes, those are very, very uh, important points. Otherwise, you won't be able to teach at all. <laughs> yeah. And no. also, if you don't even need to know a lot about Zoom and PayPal, because no. yet nowadays you, you still have, you have a lot of softwares, softwares and websites and places that can help you facilitate this, pro this process, you know? Absolutely, absolutely. There are many different platforms nowadays and all of them are getting better and better at it because more and more people teach online. Um, they constantly have updates and they make it very easy for you to use as well. So I really think tech, and especially Zoom or PayPal shouldn't be the problem here. But let's dive a little bit deeper into this niche or your ideal student or your ideal client, because especially if you first start out or if you want to start teaching online and you don't really know where to start, knowing who you want to teach can be very challenging because... Mm -hmm. Imagine you come out of your teacher training. You do like to teach everyone because ideally you want to share yoga with everyone around you. Not everyone wants this. <laughs> Not everyone is asking for your advice as a yoga teacher. So how do you know who you actually can and want to teach? This is a very good question, Annie. You know, I think that the fact of finishing your yoga teacher training and wanting to teach everyone, it's part of the process. Yeah. And it's almost necessary 
because this is how you are going to understand that people have different bodies, that you cannot teach the same sun salutation to a 20 year old person that is fit and does exercise than to a 50 year old person who never exercised in their life. So I think this is part of the process at the beginning. It's good to get experience. Yeah. And uh, once you get that experience, that is going to help you understand who are those people you resonate the most with. Mm -hmm. Within that process, you are going to realize that sometimes you have this class, you're going to teach that person and you're going to feel like, oh, I don't want to teach this person. I feel tired. I feel like, you know, on the contrary, sometimes you're going to be super excited because you're going to teach that class to that group of people that makes you feel super powerful, that makes you feel like your classes are the best in the world. Mm -hmm. so that should give you a sign of who are, you know, you can kind of reflect about why these people over here, I really don't enjoy teaching or I feel insecure or maybe I feel like, you know, my classes are not helping them so much. But these people over here, I just can't wait to teach them. And they love what I do. And I really connect. Mm -hmm. So I think this is how this process of teaching everyone can help you understand who is the people you prefer. And then there is another aspect, which I think it's also super important, which is their story and your story. Yeah. Okay. Because sometimes when we think about the niche we want to serve, I completely agree with you. Sometimes for yoga teachers can be very heady and difficult to think, oh my God, who are those niches? Who is this niche? Who is these people? But I always encourage yoga teachers to think about your own story and to ask yourself questions. Why did you start doing what you're doing right now? You know, the first time you practice yoga, why did you get into yoga in the first place? And this is a process and it takes time, you know, to sit down, to reflect and to really dig in and to know your why, why you are doing this. But this is super important. And this can really, really not only help you understanding who is the people that you want to help, but also this why it's going to be with you in the, during the difficult times. Because mm -hmm. let's face it. As a yoga teacher, it's not an easy life. It's not all, you know, pink and roses. <laughs> There's going to be difficult times. Yeah. And uh, there are going to be times when you're going to feel tired. Uh, you're going to find things that maybe you are not, they weren't in your dream life plan, but you still need to do those things. So having your why very clear and knowing why you want to serve those people Mm -hmm. sometimes that why it's connected also with your own why I think all of that process can be very helpful uh clarifying yes absolutely and I think um you also have to be flexible with this because a lot of times we have an idea of what we want to do and who we want to teach and then we get some experience and suddenly we don't think the same anymore we don't feel the yeah. same anymore so i think it's also very important to be flexible with your own ideas and expectations and just to be to practice your yoga and be open to the change and open minded mm -hmm. about what happens and how you experience it Mm, absolutely. I completely agree with you, Annie. I think it's important to be very open and flexible and see. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, totally. And, you know, I have experienced that myself. When I started, I thought all that I wanted to do was teaching yoga. But all of a sudden, I started as an independent entrepreneur. And I realized that what really passionates me because of my own journey is to help other yoga teachers. Because mm -hmm. of that frustration that I was feeling when I didn't know how to uh, post on social media, when I didn't know what to write about myself as a teacher, all of that somehow has created like my why in a way. And so I think it's important to go through this process. It's be open for it to change. Mm -hmm. I think sometimes yoga teachers fear that, oh my gosh, I, what if I choose one niche but then that niche is going to be the wrong niche. Maybe, you know, what I really like, it's another niche. 
it's okay, no problem. Just go for the niche that you think you want to have right now because even though it's that is not going to be your niche, maybe after three years, you are doing a completely different thing. But through the process of focusing on that first niche, you're going to learn a lot. You're going to mm-hmm. learn a lot. Absolutely, absolutely. It is very important that you actually go through this process. And I think the first time we spoke, um, I think it was an interview for your podcast, it's something that I started to finally understand is to really enjoy the process and not hunt for your goals or the things that you want to achieve. But understanding the process will help you to actually understand who you're teaching as well. All right. So then we know our niche. We know who we want to teach. We know more or less where they are and how to reach them, how to speak to them. Not long ago, you did a challenge on how to teach yoga online. And I would like to know what you taught your students there. Okay. So for everyone who is listening right now, this challenge, if you want to take this challenge, this challenge was specifically for yoga teachers who never teach online before and they want to do the first step. So it was like very, very basic. Basically, if, if you are listening right now and you don't know how to teach yoga, just letting you know that... I uploaded all of the video to my YouTube channel. That was a five days challenge. And basically on the first day, I would teach yoga teachers how to open a Zoom account. I wanted every day to have like a very short, yeah. easy, simple step, you know, like a little win. So the, on the first day, they would learn how to open a Zoom account. On the second day, they would learn how to send a payment request uh, with whatever payment software or whatever payment program they were using. On the third day, they would create their first Zoom meeting. Bear in mind that, you know, when we talk about Zoom meetings now, for many people, we are all familiar, but maybe some people, you know, they have never done that. No, so this is like kind of basic things that, that you still need to learn. Mm-hmm. On the day four, we learn how to create a virtual shala, basically how to create your space and the different possibilities, mm-hmm. because there are different possibilities. You can demo, you can use your video and, and do screen share, so you don't have to demo. So the different options. And then the day five, they will teach their uh, first online class. They would just like reach out someone, some friend or family, and they would teach their first class. That was the five-day challenge. They would receive every day a little video and a little PDF, and I would be giving them support and sharing them up. You can do it. Yes. Yes, it's really nice. I did the challenge too. I did teach online already, but I thought, you know what? This is always good because there might be things that I haven't thought of before. Um, and it was a really, really nice challenge. I definitely, for the I know that in our group, there are people that are thinking of teaching online, but have never done this before and are in the process right now of choosing the platforms, choosing the payment options, the video uh, streamers. So Definitely check out this challenge. I think it will be very, very useful for you. And then what other tech or software or programming or booking platforms do you think you need? So usually if you want to keep it super simple, if you have like little students and you don't want to overcomplicate things, you know, maybe with a Zoom account and a PayPal account, it's enough. But of course, if you want to make things more automatic and and you start having more students and maybe you know you don't of course you don't want to spend so much time just like kind of sending links out and everything then as we say before there are plenty of options out there in the Mm -hmm. market right now i can tell you one of the most recent that i discovered it's called ubindi Mm -hmm. and they are a teaching platform I can also send you the links about this Upindi. Basically, they have everything that you need to start. Basically, you connect your Zoom with with Upindi and you can collect payments. You can schedule schedule your classes. You can Mm -hmm. send email to your people. And you can actually have a free account that will allow you to do all of that for 50 students, completely free. So 
this is the software that I've been using recently and I've been experimenting with them. They are nice people, these uh, Ubindi, the creators. I think you may know any yoga trial. I don't know if you are familiar with yoga trial. It's, it was like a kind of a software or website where you could put your profile as a yoga teacher. Okay. And um, I was there in yoga trial back in the days. It was like a social network for yoga teachers. And they are the same people who created Ubindi. Right. They reached me out a few days ago and they say, hey, we would like you to see our product if you and give it a try, see if you like it. And I, I thought it was really cool. Mm -hmm. So at the moment, I'm also doing a, a little bit of an affiliate program. So I would recommend anyone who wants to try that for free, take the free account. I can also drop the links or send them to you if you want to share with your audience. And then if you like, and if you have more than 50 students, because I think 50 students is a good number already, mm -hmm and you can do before 50 students for free, then you can upload and, you know, I can send you the promo code and everything and, and you can have a special discount. But I think mm -hmm. basically that's what you need. You need a place to run your class, that could be a Zoom, and then a, a somewhere to collect your payments. Mm -hmm. And that could be two separate things or that could be all in one thing in Bindi or there is also offering tree or there are also so many other places. Yes, there's a lot out there. There's a lot. I really like, have you heard of Momo Yoga? It's a studio platform specifically for yoga studios. I think it sounds similar to what you say, or what you explain. Um, I'm not sure how it works with pricing. I think it will be very similar to that. But it's really good to have a booking platform because... If you have one or two students, you can take the payment yourself. You can book them in yourself. But as you say, as your student list starts to grow and as you get more students into your classes, it's just really nice to have that automated and not having to worry about who is coming, who's canceling, who's paid already, who still has to pay. It is a bit of a hassle. So definitely check out booking platforms as well. And we spoke about the niche. I do still want to ask you, how do you then gain more students? Because that's what we are here for today. We do have our uh, setup, we've got a booking platform, and we've got one or two students, but we want to gain more. How do we go mm -hmm. on about this? Okay, so then that is time for us to start creating an online presence. Yeah. And of course, when I say an online presence, it doesn't necessarily need to be on social media. Personally, I love social media. I think social media are an amazing free tool that you can use for reaching people. Mm -hmm. But I also know that many yoga teachers struggle with social media. Many yoga teachers, they don't like to be sucked up by the social media energy, which is just like very, you know, you can lose a lot of time if, if you are not keeping boundaries with it. Mm -hmm. So I think it's okay if you don't want to do social media. I think it's still possible to create an online presence. Mm -hmm. But you need to understand that if you want to create an online presence, if it's not social media, you need to find a way. Yeah. That could be a YouTube channel. That could be a blog on your website. That could be a podcast. That could be a newsletter, something where people have the opportunity to receive from you yeah okay so let's take it a little bit backwards so we say before let's go a little bit back let me let me go back we were saying before that we need to know who is that person yeah now that we know who is that person we need to understand what is the problem they are facing mm -hmm. let's go back to the example i gave before the office workers they have their problems they have their back pain they have their neck pain so now we also know that we have a solution for their problem and mm -hmm. the solution for the problem comes in many forms of basically is our yoga practice now what would be the next thing the next thing would be to in any way reach those people and to share content with them for yoga teachers who want to create an online business, who want to create an online presence, this is basic. This is super important. Yeah. We need to create content and we need to give it for free. 
And here, Annie, I find that many yoga teachers have a lot of resistance when I say the word free. And I get it, I totally get it because we know that as yoga teachers, we wanna be paid for our work, which is super important. And I am 100% for that. We need to be paid for the work that we do. So when I tell yoga teachers that I work with that they need to do video and upload in, in whatever platform it is, and it's gonna take them time and effort, they're gonna be like, but how am I gonna do that for free? And then is when I say, okay, here we need to change our mindset. It's not about doing things for free. This is your marketing. Mm -hmm. So when we create content and when we put the content out there into the world in any form or shape through any of the communication channels that we choose, and hopefully that content reach the people who are part of our niche, we want that content to be helpful for that people. Mm -hmm. it, I don't know if I'm being clear. Absolutely, yes. I'm, I'm just listening because I completely okay. agree with you. It's very important that it's actually a free way of marketing. Obviously, you're investing time, you're investing um, your energy in it. But it's a free way to market yourself and to yeah. cause this um, organic uh, visibility. People need to be able to see you and to hear you and to get in touch with you before they are ready to go to your classes. Correct. Think about this, Annie, because I, I like that you, Annie, bring that about, uh, you know, the, invest, the investment of time, mm -hmm. which is totally true. You need to put time there. You need to do work. But yeah. one of the good things about building an online business is that the investment actually is, is very low if you think about the financial side. You don't yeah. need to spend a lot of money, but you need to put the time. Yeah. If you want to open a, a physical studio, which is, this is a whole another conversation because we don't <laughs> even know if this is going to be a business model in the future. We don't even know if that is going to be even a thing yeah. in a year yeah. or, or two. I really, really love a studio and I really hope that, you know, yoga studio keep thriving and, in the world, but we don't know if this is something that it's gonna keep going in the future. Mm -hmm. But if you do that, if you decide to do that, then you're gonna invest a lot of money. You know, you mm -hmm. need to pay the rent, you need to pay for uh, people cleaning your studio unless you clean it. You know, you have a different investment that you have to do. But yeah. if you are working online, there is no such a big financial investment at the beginning. But mm -hmm. of course, you need to invest time on that. Yeah, absolutely. And then there is another thing, Annie, which I think is important. So I told you, like, what do we do to gain more students and clients? Of course, we need to think about this process mm -hmm. and to see the big picture and to understand that we sharing content for specific people, reaching those people, understanding where they are, understanding what are the problems they have, understanding how can we help them and sharing our free content with them. But then there is also another very, very important piece of the puzzle, which is we need to invite those people to join our paid offerings. Mm -hmm. <laughs> because if we don't create paid offerings and we don't invite people to, to join our paid offerings, it's like we're going to be doing all of this work and people are going to be expecting to get all of this content all the time. So it is important also that we tell people this is another way in which you can work for me with me in a deeper level this is another way in which i can help you with the problem that you have and we can work in a you know in a different yeah in a different way in a different level yeah in different exactly. capacity exactly you can really deepen your practice or overcome your problem with personal advice and recommendations and help and guidance which is important and this is often not even the case when you go to a regular or normal yoga studio either it's you get this advice you get these classes but if you work with people one-to-one -one or in person or specifically for their problem um it's way more valuable obviously yeah it's it's completely different experience. Yes, absolutely. It's more personal and it's really tailored to what you need as a student and what you're what you can offer them as a teacher too. 
So what are some, because you spoke about your visibility, creating presence, being online, offering free stuff to, to be seen, but also speak about what you offer that is paid to actually make a living and don't end up in jail because you can't pay for anything. <laughs> um, what are some other common mistakes that you see teachers make when they teach online and when they okay. create their business online? Mm -hmm. So one of the things, and I think it relates with what we have been talking before, it's the fact of willing to teach everyone. Uh, as, as we've been talking during this conversation, it is okay to teach many different kinds of people when you start your journey, when you come out of your teacher training and you are gaining experience. And usually when you gain that experience, I would even go so far and say, teach people for free when you finish your teacher training, because that is going to be an amazing opportunity. Teach friends, teach family, you know? Mm -hmm. If you can collaborate with some studio, they would also pay you for that. So it's another important, it's another way to, to gain in experience. But I would say at the beginning, right when you finish your teacher training and the process between finishing your teacher training and starting your business, during this part, I would say, don't focus so much on making money. Mm -hmm. Focus on gaining experience, gaining visibility. But then once you understand through that process, once you understand your niche, once you're very clear and you are ready to step into your role of yoga business owner, mm -hmm. then have it clear. Who is that person? Don't tell me you want to teach yoga for everyone. No. I don't want to hear that. I want to hear you. I teach yoga for this specific group of people. Yeah. And uh, the, I think this is one of the mistakes that I see that uh, many yoga teachers, it's coming from a good place. It's coming from an amazing place because we yoga teachers, we have this willingness of helping people. We want everyone to understand that the yoga is so helpful. I mean, this is what has made our go through this pandemic and be sane. I don't know if we're still sane, maybe not, but anyway, <laughs> you know, <laughs> and we want to share that with the world. So we know this is an important message. Yeah. And that's why sometimes we're like, everyone should know about this. But when we want to teach everyone and we want to share that with everyone, this is when our message as yoga teachers come a little bit diluted, diluted. Mm -hmm. This is one of the problems that I see. There are many things. Can I go on? <laughs> yes, absolutely. Go on. Share it all. <laughs> okay, share it all. There is another mistake that I see very often, and it makes me say, no. <laughs> you know, sometimes it makes me pull my hair. No, why do you do this? And I've done that. Okay, I want to get clear with you, Annie. Everything, yeah. every mistake that I'm talking to you today, I've done it. I know yeah. it because I've done it. I've done every mistake and keep doing every mistake under the sun. So don't get me wrong. I don't want to be that one who say, oh, this is right, this is wrong. I've done it all. <laughs> Big one you is... learn from your mistakes. Don't. I think often, sorry to interrupt. I just want to point this out because it's so important to make mistakes, to understand what works, what doesn't work, what's right and what's wrong. Basically, we need to make mistakes to learn and to improve and to evolve. It's completely part of the process. Because if you never make any mistakes, there's something not human about you, first of all. <laughs> and you never learn. You never learn anything new if you don't make mistakes. Sorry to absolutely. interrupt. Keep going. No, no, absolutely. <laughs> I'm with you, you know, and I think we could have a whole conversation about this because we have this mindset about mistakes, maybe because we were taught that way that mistakes are bad. But actually, mistakes, it's one of the best ways to learn things. So I'm with you 100%. Yeah. Yeah. And, um, okay, let's put this example. Let's put this yoga teacher who they have social media. They use social media. Mm -hmm. And they promote, like they, uh, they post something now and then, you know, and like not being very consistent, maybe not speaking to, not sharing valuable content with the audience even if they have a niche but maybe they don't spend so much time sharing valuable content but then they have a class coming or they have an offering they have a retreat coming and they start posting and they expect that everyone in the internet is gonna they are going to see their posting 
their classes, their schedule, and they're going to be like, oh my gosh, I want to join. But what happened? They're going to find cricket. They're mm-hmm. going to see that, you know, people are not so willing to take their classes. And why is this? And this has to do with all of the process that we have been talking before, which is the mistake here is promoting your services without having a strategy that includes nurturing your people, nurturing your audience. Yeah. And the process that we talked before, which is known as no like and trust process, which is, you know, understanding your people, sharing content with them, and then inviting them to your paid offerings. This is the way, this is how it works in the online world. Mm-hmm. So one of the big mistakes I would say, it's, it's like teachers who promote their classes without having been nurturing their audience first. Absolutely. I think this is a very common one. I think even just promoting your classes without nurturing does not work. Saying on Instagram stories, hey, come to my class at 7 p.m. and nothing else. If people Uh don't feel the need to actually go there because they first don't know what to expect, they might not even know you because they only have seen your class promotions and not what you actually do and how you can help them. Absolutely. Yes, yeah, really good point. I like that you said that. <laughs> um, I want to speak about this quickly as well, because obviously teaching online will open up a lot of possibilities for you to be super international and reach other people, other students, other teachers even around the world. What other benefits do you see of teaching online or being this international? So one of them, obviously it's, when you teach online, or as you say, as being an international yoga, uh, yoga teacher, and especially if you speak in two languages, such as I'm, I'm imagining people are watching us now yeah. from Enga Unite, I know that your mission is to help these yoga teachers who want to build an international uh, teaching career. And what I would say is that one of the benefits that are you are less limited. Yeah. You know, once you're teaching online, you are not limited to be teaching people in your city, in your village. But even sometimes, you know, I would say, as I say, everything is changing nowadays. And even if you teach in a city, I think it's still important to to have that online presence, you know, and to, Mm -hmm. because people nowadays are mostly on the internet, finding for classes and stuff like that. But Anyway, I'm just like kind of going a little bit out of the flow here. But (laughs) what I think something really important is uh, to understand is that you are not going to have that limitation of Mm -hmm. being limited to one place. Another amazing thing is that you can connect with other teachers from somewhere in the world. I'm thinking about you and I, for example. You see, we are connecting. We are, there is this magic called technology and you know, we are in two different parts of the world. We are sharing this time and I hope, and I'm sure someone is going to be benefiting from this conversation we are having. One of the benefits I would say, you can have an impact, you know, at a more, at a bigger, bigger level. Absolutely, so absolutely. The sky is the limit because really in being online, the videos stay, your classes stay, you have classes on demand. You can do workshops, you can like, we do create collaborations or exchanges. Mm-hmm. It's it's just a limitless possibility or mm-hmm. um, world of opportunities. Mano, we have spoken so much, but is there anything else that you would like to add or recommend or share Okay. <laughs> okay. So I have three quick things that I want to add yes, to this. Absolutely. Go first, for it. <laughs> the first one is that don't actually get used to the idea for online yoga teachers, get used to the idea that technology is going to fail you. And mm-hmm. I hope that as I'm saying this, the or call doesn't fall or anything. <laughs> <laughs> but this is going to happen. This is going to happen for you when you are teaching a yoga class, when you are uploading your class on YouTube, when you are having your group of students joining your Zoom call. Technology, it's going to fail. Mm -hmm. Start thinking that because I know many yoga teachers are scared about, oh my gosh, what if suddenly my call drop? 
what if yoga people are in the waiting room and they can never get in? Those are things that are going to happen. So if you start understanding that technology will fail you, I think it's going to be, you're going to feel like a little bit more relaxed. You're going to be like, mm-hmm. okay, it's going to happen. So <laughs> it happens. And I think most people understand that too. And they are aware of that too. So they're very forgiving when it happens. They don't really exactly. need you um, responsible for it because it's technology. It happens to everyone. Now, for those of you who, okay, they, you're teaching online, you already feel confident, you know that technology is going to fail you and you are okay with that. And now it's time for you to create that online presence. Mm-hmm. Something what I would say is get ready to put yourself out there Mm -hmm. if you want to create an online presence and as i I repeat myself again it doesn't need to be social media but you need to put yourself out there in any way i know this feels uncomfortable this is weird you know we are having this conversation annie now and maybe someone is going to be watching this conversation in a couple of years and there is a part of me that feels like, oh my gosh, what did I say like six months ago? You know, maybe I was saying something that is stupid and it's out there in the world and that's okay. You know, mm-hmm. you need to get ready to understand that this is going to happen. And actually the this take us to the last tip, which is very related to what I was just talking, which is at the end of the day, honey, it's not about you or me. It's not about us as teachers. It's about the people we are helping. Absolutely. Mm-hmm. So if I, we can, if you kind of think that I'm doing this not because I want to be someone in the internet out there, but because I truly, really believe that what I am teaching now, it's going to help someone understand something. So I kind of, you know, that changed my mindset. I don't worry so much about how I look. I don't worry so much about how this is going to sound in six months, three years, whatever. Exactly. I think that's such an important thing. And I think even if you teach in studios, very often people are so busy thinking about the way they come across, if people understand them, if they make themselves understood. But as soon as you switch that perspective and actually focus on I'm teaching this person because of this and this reason. And like you spoke about earlier, if you connect to the reason why you're doing it, so your purpose and how you can offer a solution to the problem that some other people have, all of this will fade away. Mm-hmm. Okay. Mm-hmm. It's, it's about serving your students rather, about, rather than being about out there in the world and be seen because, of, because you're so amazing. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah. Exactly. It's not about you. No, exactly. Very, very nice. So tell us more because you're on Instagram, you're on Facebook. You've got a challenge coming up too. Tell us, where can we find you? So for English, okay, let's say that for English speaking, Spanish speaking, the best way to find me is my website, which is Spanish name. A little bit difficult for English speakers, but it's Emprendedores del Yoga, which basically Mm -hmm. means yoga entrepreneurs. You can find me under that name on Instagram. Mm -hmm. I share all of my content in English on Instagram. And then for the Spanish speaking audience, I have a podcast and a Facebook group. Everything is under the same name, Emprendedores del Yoga. And you've got a challenge coming up too. Tell us about that. Yeah. So I have this challenge, which is going to happen September 20 to the 22nd. So it's a three days free challenge and it's called online growth for yoga teachers. Mm-hmm. So in this challenge during three days, I'm going to help you to understand, you know, many of the things that we've been talking about today, but basically I'm going to ask you a few questions and we're going to do some kind of work together for you, not only to get clear on why, how, and when, and who, and all of these questions, but also taking some action by starting doing the first steps, Mm -hmm. creating an online presence. And for anyone who wants to sign up for this challenge, they can find the link for signing up at the moment, it's on my Instagram bio. 
So if you go to my Instagram bio, you're gonna find the link there. I still need to upload, uh, put it in my website, but I haven't yet, but it will be there soon. But the easiest way would be go to my Instagram profile and, uh, and find the link to, for signing up there. And if you are a Spanish speaker, uh, join us on the Facebook group, Emprendedores del Yoga. It's a community. We are almost 280 teachers, more or less now, Spanish speaking teachers. Mm -hmm. And uh, I also have my podcast. So all of these basically can be also found in my website, emprendedoresdeyoga.com. Really, really nice. Well, I think it's needless to say that I really, really love what you're doing. I think you offer such great value to your community on the podcast, in a group, but also on Instagram. And you've got amazing challenges. So everyone, check Manu out. Go to Emprendedores. How would you pronounce this in English? Emprendedores. Maybe that way they can found, find it. <laughs> yes, yes. I know it's kind of... <laughs> um emprendedores maybe emprendedores <laughs> emprendedores del yoga maybe i don't know <laughs> we will have some people in the group <laughs> And if you're watching this later, if you're watching the replay or if you're listening to this on the podcast, always send in questions through Facebook messages or Instagram messages or send an email to me at annieatenga.com. No, <laughs> engaunite.com. Manu, what is your email address in case people would like to ask you questions? <clears throat> so my email address is manu at emprendedoresdelyoga.com. <laughs> <laughs> amazing Manu thank you so much for being here and for sharing your time and wisdom and everything that you spoke about today it's been an my pleasure. absolute pleasure my pleasure it's 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 been an honor Annie you know that I I am really fan of Enga Unite so I'm super super happy to be here all right thank you so okay. much I'll my see pleasure. you tomorrow good to see you <laughs> good to see you if you feel inspired and like what you learned today, I'd love for you to leave a review. Don't forget to subscribe and follow us at Enga Unite. Join the community and become a member of the Teach Yoga in English support group on Facebook. Practice, rest, repeat and all will come.